Football players are among the most elite athletes in the world and some of the highest paid, but even they are not immune to ending up in crime reports due to their actions. For example, legendary Argentine footballer Diego Maradona had wild antics during and after his career. With a career as long, illustrious, and thoroughly tumultuous as his, he obviously had numerous encounters with the law. In 1991, after testing positive for cocaine, Maradona was banned for 15 months while playing for Napoli in Italy. Later that year, he was arrested in Buenos Aires for cocaine possession and trafficking. In 1994, Maradona bought an air rifle and fired it at reporters near his Buenos Aires house, resulting in a two-year, ten-month suspended sentence. His criminal troubles didn't end after retirement. In 2009, it was discovered that Maradona still owed the Italian government 37 million euros in back taxes accrued while playing for Napoli. Among the assets seized by Italian police to cover the costs were a pair of 4,000 euro earrings. Only after his death did the Italian government forgive the remaining debt. None other than another legendary French footballer Eric Cantona had a well-documented incident that led the Manchester United legend to serve a 24-hour prison sentence. During a 1995 match between United and Crystal Palace, Cantona was sent off after kicking Richard Shaw. Before entering the tunnel, Cantona launched a kung fu kick into the crowd, hitting Palace fan Matthew Simmons in the face. This bizarre and iconic incident was followed by a press conference featuring Cantona's philosophical speech about sardines and seagulls. Initially sentenced to two weeks in prison for the incident, Cantona's sentence was reduced to 24 hours and 120 hours of community service due to fan outcry. What Diego and Eric did doesn't compare to what English footballer Gavin Grant did. The Englishman began his playing career at Millwall, but the club terminated his contract, not wanting to have a player accused of a criminal offense in their ranks. In 2010, he was sentenced to life imprisonment for a murder committed six years earlier. In 2005, Grant was accused in this case but was acquitted. However, five years later, evidence was found. According to the investigation, Grant, along along with an accomplice, killed a 21-year-old man who had allegedly stolen money from him. In 2015, Grant's appeal was rejected. Another English footballer, who chose to represent Jamaica at the international level, Marlon King, has also been involved in a number of criminal cases. A former player for Birmingham City, Watford, and Nottingham Forest in 2002 was sentenced to one and the half years in prison for car theft. He also faced accusations of assault, including a notable 18-month sentence in 2009 for S.A. of a woman and breaking her nose in a nightclub incident. Despite these legal troubles, he continued to play football intermittently. In 2013, King was involved in a car accident that severely injured another man, leading to another 18-month prison sentence and a three-year driving ban. Over his lifetime, King received three separate prison sentences. Following his final release, he moved to Zambia with his family, converted to Islam, and adopted the name Abu Hamza Tariq. A much more well-known English footballer whose career was personally destroyed is Adam Johnson. He was a very talented player who showcased his skills at Manchester City, later at Sunderland, and even earned 12 caps for England's national team up until March 2, 2015. Johnson was arrested by Durham police on suspicion of engaging in inappropriate activities with an underage individual. Although he pleaded not guilty in June of the same year, the trial was later resumed on February 10, 2016, where Johnson pleaded guilty to one count of inappropriate activities with an underage individual and one count of grooming. Johnson was granted bail to say farewell to his infant daughter, and on March 24, 2000, 2016, he was sentenced to six years in prison. The severity of the charges resulted in the termination of his contract with Sunderland and sponsors. He served his sentence in HM Prison Leeds and the remaining time in HM Prison Moorland near Doncaster. He was initially released on March 22, 2019, after serving only half of his sentence. There was also an incredibly talented footballer from Newcastle's academy, Nigel Ranger, who, due to his actions off the pitch, was unable to become a Premier League star. His legal the saga began in 2007, at the age of 15, when Ranger was sentenced to 11 weeks in a Young Offenders Institute after being convicted of participating in street robbery in Muswell Hill, London. In 2011, he was charged with assaulting a man in Newcastle City Centre, which set the tone for a troubling pattern which forced Newcastle United dropped him to the reserve team, even though he wasn't found guilty. Subsequent incidents included criminal damage and a fray, leading to a strained relationship with the club. In 2013, Newcastle United United got tired of him and made the decision to release Ranger, and from there his life and career started to go into the dark ends. His journey continued with stints at various lower league clubs, but legal troubles kept following him. The striker faced repeated arrests and court appearances. Despite loan spells at Barnsley and Swindon Town, Ranger struggled to regain the form that had once made him a promising prospect. Ranger's legal woes continued in 2017 when he was arrested for fraud and money laundering. Ranger's career became 
came a series of missed chances and unfulfilled potential, a stark contrast to the promising start he had at Newcastle. At the moment, he is a free agent, and his last club was Boreham Wood FC from National League. However, with Joey Barton, who also played for Newcastle, although his career turned out better, criminal issues still prevented him from fully realizing his potential. Known for his combative playing style and outspoken personality, Barton's legal history has been marked by a series of incidents that have cast a shadow over his professional career. On December 27, 2007, Barton was arrested on suspicion of assault in Liverpool city centre. Barton punched a man 20 times, causing him to lose consciousness before attacking a teenage boy. At the time, Barton was on bail for two previous arrests, and he was denied bail for the third arrest. Barton pleaded guilty to the offence. One of the most notable incidents occurred in 2008 when Barton was sentenced to six months in prison for assault during a night out in Liverpool. In August 2008, ex-youth player of Manchester City, Jamie Tandy, pursued a civil claim against Barton. Back in 2004, Barton had stubbed out a lit cigar in Tandy's eye in the club's academy. In November 2009, Barton agreed to pay Tandy £65,000 as part of an out-of-court settlement. Barton's legal troubles continued in 2012. He was charged with two counts of violent conduct during a match, leading to a subsequent 12-match ban. Off the field, he faced allegations of assaulting his former teammate, Usman Dabo, resulting in a suspended jail sentence. The incidents culminated in Barton being released by Queen's Park Rangers in 2013. In 2017, he was handed an 18-month ban from football for breaching betting regulations, further tarnishing his reputation. After his retirement, he continued his football career as a manager, which didn't stop him from getting in trouble because on April 13, 2019, South Yorkshire Police launched an investigation after Barton was alleged to have assaulted opposition manager Daniel Stendhal in the Oakwell Tunnel following a game between Fleetwood Town and Barnsley but was found not guilty of the charge. In July 2021, Barton was charged with the assault by beating his wife in their house in Kew, London, but the case was closed after the prosecution failed to call her as a witness. In Italy, there have also been cases where footballers have crossed the line of the law. But the story of 44-year-old Vincenzo Iaquinta stands out significantly. The former Juventus player was a member of the Italian team that won the 2006 World Cup but was sentenced to two years in prison in 2018. The court found that he had illegally transferred two revolvers to his father, who was under judicial restrictions and prohibited from possessing firearms. Additionally, at that time, the 38-year-old footballer was among 148 people charged with alleged connections to the Indrangheta, a major mafia network in southern Italy believed to control up to 80% of Europe's cocaine trade. Although the judge dismissed the charges related to mafia ties against Iaquinta, his father was found guilty and sentenced to 19 years in prison. Following an appeal, Vincenzo's sentence was reduced to one year of probation, and he was banned from owning firearms. Meanwhile, the story of Brazilian fullback Dani Alves is tragic, as he destroyed his legacy with just one action. On January 20th, 2023, he was arrested on charges of SA. According to court files, the incident occurred on December 30th, 2022 in one of Barcelona's nightclubs, where he allegedly forced a waiter to touch him inappropriately his private parts and then brought her forcibly to the bathroom, where he forced her to have an intercourse with him. Police collected evidence, including DNA matching Danny's. The public prosecutor in this case is seeking a nine-year jail term for Mr. Alves and for him to pay damages of £150,000 to the woman. His previous club, Unam Pumas from Mexico City, terminated his contract immediately after after the arrest. On February 22, 2024, he was found guilty and sentenced to four and a half years in prison. He will also be placed on five years of probation upon release, and a nine and a half year restraining order will also be put into effect. On March 20, 2024, Alves was released from jail. However, he was ordered to surrender his Spanish and Brazilian passports to the police, effectively prohibiting him from leaving Spain. He was also required to appear in court weekly and maintain distance from the victim. Another fullback currently playing for Barcelona, Mark Marcos Alonso has had a successful career despite his infamous criminal case. Alonso, who was playing for Bolton Wanderers at the time, was arrested in 2011 for his involvement in a car crash in Madrid. He was the driver of the car that collided with a wall, resulting in the death of a co-passenger, a 22-year-old woman. Alonso was driving at 122.8 km per hour in wet conditions in a 50 zone. The crash was made even more tragic by the fact that Alonso had a blood alcohol level of 0.93 mg per liter, almost three times the permissible limit in Spain. Originally facing four years in prison, Alonso had his sentence reduced to 21 months, which was later dropped entirely after he paid 500,000 euros in an out-of-court settlement to the victim.
victim's family. Another Spaniard who became a legendary goalkeeper for the club, David De Gea, also had legal troubles but over food. In September 2011, De Gea was detained after he ate a donut worth one quid in a supermarket and tried to leave without paying. It was estimated that David could have bought 57,000 donuts with a week's salary at Manchester United. As it turned out, De Gea was not actually detained. It was simply a stern talk with the security staff, and David had just misunderstood how to pay. However, rumors spread in the media that Manchester United was tired of the Spaniard's clumsiness and was ready to sell him back to Spain. Fortunately, Ferguson did not jump to conclusions and gave De Gea another chance. Soon, David became one of the best goalkeepers not only in the history of the Red Devils, but also in the entire Premier League. Queen's Park Rangers player Ilias Chair has been with the team since 2017, including a one-year spell at Stevenage. He is a solid championship player who, on February 23, 2024, was convicted by a court in Antwerp of assaulting a truck driver, along with his brother Jaber. Chair was found to have assaulted the truck driver with a rock, causing a skull fracture and leaving him unconscious. He was sentenced to 12 months in prison, with an additional 12 months suspended. Chair is appealing the sentence, and Queen's Park Rangers have stated that he will remain available for selection during the appeals process. Patrick De Silva had a decent career in the Danish league, playing for Brunby and Lingby. However, in March 2020, De Silva jeopardized his career by engaging in inappropriate behavior over social media. He sent sexually explicit photographs and videos via Snapchat to a female he had initially contacted a few days earlier on Instagram. Following this incident, the victim's family reported De Silva to the police and notified his club, Lingby. In March 2021, De Silva was sentenced to 20 days of probation and was ordered to pay one $200 in compensation to the victim, in addition to covering the costs of the case. Subsequently, he was released from Lingby and now plays in the Faroe Islands for KI Klaxvik. Czech player Tomáš Zepka, known for his stints with Fiorentina and West Ham, which marked the peak of his club-level career, began to experience a downward spiral after his divorce in 2016. In August 2018, Zepka was sentenced to six months in jail for advertising sexual services online in his ex-wife's name. This was later reduced to a community order. However, in February 2019, Zepka was sentenced to 15 months in prison for fraud after a Prague court discovered he had sold a luxury rental car that did not belong to him. Two weeks later, he received an additional nine-month sentence when two previously suspended sentences for driving under the influence were converted into jail terms due to his other convictions. The Dutch footballer Quincy Promise's career is likely to end with him being barred from leaving Russia. Despite securing lucrative contracts with Spartak Moscow, Sevilla, and Ajax, he found himself embroiled in serious criminal troubles. In December 2020, Promes was detained as a suspect in a stabbing incident that had occurred in July of the same year. The victim, purportedly a relative of Promes, had engaged in an argument with him before the incident unfolded. Although Promes denied involvement, Dutch prosecutors concluded in November 2021 that he should face prosecution. In March 2022, it was announced that Promes would be charged with attempted murder. Surprisingly, no travel restrictions were imposed on him. Instead, his assets in the Netherlands were temporarily confiscated. Consequently, he managed to avoid interrupting his career and relocated to Russia, rejoining Spartak Moscow. Promes chose not to appear for the opening of his trial, opting to stay in Russia, a country without an extradition treaty with the Netherlands. Prosecutors have requested a two-year prison sentence. On June 19, 2023, Promes was found guilty and sentenced to 18 months of imprisonment. However, being in Russia provides him with a means to evade the punishment unless he enters a country that has an extradition treaty with the Netherlands. Later in the same year, the Dutch Prosecution Service confirmed they would prosecute Promes for drug trafficking, alleging that he attempted to import over 1.3 kilograms of cocaine through the Antwerp port in January 2020, with a street value in the tens of millions of euros. Despite demanding a nine-year prison term for him in absentia, he has been sentenced to six years in prison for drug trafficking, but the challenges of extracting him from Russia may enable him to escape the consequences of the alleged drug-related offenses. Somehow, off-the-pitch activities caught the promising Mexican goalkeeper Omar Ortiz, one of his generation's best, in serious criminal activities. Although he struggled with drug issues in his youth by the age of 24, it seemed those problems were behind him. He had become a key player for Monterrey 
Monterrey and was called up to the national team. While Ortiz did not become a star and spent his entire career in the Mexican League, he remained highly regarded by coaches, experts, and fans alike. At 34, Ortiz retired to applause from the stands, but by the age of 36, he was sentenced to 77 years in prison. It turned out that while still a professional footballer, Ortiz had maintained close ties with drug traffickers, helping to transport and distribute drugs and participating in deals. He was even involved in the kidnapping of individuals from rival groups. For the abduction of three people, the former goalkeeper received a sentence so lengthy that he will not be eligible for release until 2089. Rene Aguida is a legendary Colombian goalkeeper who loved dribbling past opponents and scoring goals. He earned the nickname El Loco for a reason. To justify this nickname, he invented a new way of saving shots, the scorpion kick, jumping with both feet. However, his personal life was equally incredible and wild. Iguita was a true star in Colombia, even beloved by drug lords, including Pablo Escobar. Due to his involvement, the footballer ended up in jail. In 1993, the goalkeeper acted as a mediator in a deal between Escobar and Carlos Molina. As a result, Pablo released Molina's kidnapped daughter, and Iguita received $64,000 for his services. It turned out that such compensation violated Colombian laws, which prohibit profiting from kidnappings. The footballer was imprisoned for seven months, even though no charges were formally brought against him. Iguita even went on a hunger strike but was not released early. After his release, he resumed his playing career and continued for another 16 years. Russian striker Alexander Kokorin and midfielder Pavel Mamayev were once considered the top prospects of their national team. However, due to their persistent disciplinary problems, they not only failed to reach their potentials but also found themselves entangled in a party lifestyle that ultimately led them to jail. In October 2018, Kokorin and Mamayev, accompanied by Kokorin's brother and another friend, were commemorating a decade of friendship. Initially, they damaged the car of a national TV employee and assaulted her driver. A few hours later, at a cafe on Arbat Street, they engaged in a brawl with two officials from the Ministry of Industry and Trade involving the use of a chair. The incident garnered widespread media coverage, prompting the footballer to attempt purchasing CCTV footage from the cafe's security, though it was already too late. Consequently, before the verdict was announced, the football players spent nine months in pre-trial detention. In July 2019, they were incarcerated, where they worked in a sewing workshop and occasionally played football with their fellow inmates. In September of the same year, they were released. Despite their troubled past, both managed to secure opportunities to play for high-profile clubs in Russia, and Kokorin even ventured a abroad to play for Fiorentina. Georgian striker Georgi Demetradze was one of the best players in his country, achieving the top scorer title in the championships of Georgia in 1996-97 for Dinamo Tbilisi, Russia in 1999 for Alanya Vladikavkaz, and Ukraine in 2003-04 for Dynamo Kyiv. Closer to the end of his career, he returned to his homeland in 2010 and signed with FC Tiskinvali. He played six games and scored one goal before his arrest. On July 8, 2010, Demetradze was arrested by the officers of the main division of Tbilisi and the Counter-Terrorism Center of the Georgian Ministry of Internal Affairs on charges related to connections with the criminal underworld, specifically with the criminal authority Vato Kipiani. Additionally, he was accused of participating in an underground betting operation, where he served as a collector responsible for recovering debts owed to the betting pool. On March 23, 2011, he was sentenced to six years of imprisonment by the Tbilisi City Court. In December 2012, he was released from custody as part of an amnesty. At present, he is the president of the football club Torpedo Kutaisi. Bruno Fernandes de Souza was a Brazilian goalkeeper who played for Atletico Mineiro and Flamengo, but in 2010 his career ended due to his serious criminal charges. He was accused of orchestrating the kidnapping and murder of his ex-girlfriend Eliza Samudio, who was seeking child support for their son. The heinous crime shocked the nation, revealing a disturbing web of criminal activities involving Bruno and his associates. In 2013, he was sentenced to 22 years years in prison for his role in the crime. However, Brazil's legal system allows for a lengthy appeals process, and Bruno's sentence was reduced in subsequent years. Shockingly, in 2017, he was released on parole after serving just seven years. His return to professional football sparked controversy, with Boa Esport, a Brazilian club, signing him, claiming he deserved a second chance. This decision faced widespread condemnation, raising ethical questions about the rehabilitation of individuals convicted of such serious crimes. Tunisian footballer Nizar Trabelsi 
Street was not highly successful on the pitch but gained some attention while playing for the German club Fortuna Dusseldorf, though his career did not flourish. His life after football took a drastic turn as he became associated with the terrorist organization Al-Qaeda. Nizar admitted to traveling to Afghanistan several times and meeting with Osama bin Laden. In 2003, he was labeled a terrorist and sentenced to 10 years in prison for conspiring to attack American soldiers stationed at a Belgian airbase. He was also found to possess illegal weapons. In 2001, he was suspected of planning an attack on the U.S. Embassy in Paris, allegedly being assigned as a bomber with a concealed bomb. In 2013, Nizar was extradited to the U.S., where he was likely to face life imprisonment. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and highly recommend you to check out some of my other videos, such as the celebrities who own football clubs and football clubs' friendships, as you can see on your screen. My name is Ole. Love this game. I'll see you next time.